Hey, M0 Nation, Jason here now sitting down in the sim. So we've been talking all about instrument approaches. We briefed the uh, ILS uh, 10 left into Portland last week. Now we're going to be going ahead and flying it here this week. So as you can see, I've synced up everything already. So ForeFlight is talking nicely to X-Plane. You can see where we're at. We're just outside of Buxom as our initial. As you can see there, we're going to kind of fly that full approach. Uh, we know that radar is required here. I need to be at 3,000 feet at Buxom or higher, which I am. Let me show you over here, make the G1000 kind of big so you can see it. Um, 3,000, I am on, do have my proper CDI on, on the localizer one, uh, just confirm 111.3, all programmed up. My flight plan, PDX, Buxom to trail and then Blazer, somebody is a uh, NBA fan doing trail blazers there. Um, We've got that all queued up. That looks set. I have loaded my minimums um, already. I just rounded up obviously to 300 feet. We're going down to 293. We'll call it 300. Uh, and then an approach course of a 103, which we have set there. I do want to sync up my heading bug now with my intercept angle. And again, doing all this on pause as I'm six miles out from Buxom. I believe everything looks good. Everything is set. I love the beauty of the sim because I can pause, I can program, and then I can go ahead and I can actually fly. This should be a good angle here. Coming off a of pause, sometimes it, the sim jumps a little bit. Let me just scroll down just a little bit, maybe zoom in. I don't need to zoom in any. Let's hold that here. Let me get back down to three. Little power, there we go. I'll hold roughly, this was this like a 160 type heading here. Holding my 3,000 feet that you see. Nice, stable air, actually using the real conditions in uh, Portland today. Sorry, everybody in Portland, the day I filmed this, <laughs> a little crummy outside. You can see I'm 5.6 from Buxom that you can see there. All's looking good. A little bit to the left, checking on the iPad. I have a fairly aggressive intercept angle in there, so we'll see what happens with that. Let me drop down just a bit. It is 3,000 or greater, but I'd like to be at 3,000. I'll do that with just the tiniest bit of power and a little bit of nose down trim to get me there. Watching my localizer to come alive, 4.9 from Buxom. But I'm going to intercept it, obviously, well before that. Just watching that, watching my altitude, trying to fly it as hands-free as possible. Sim is tough. You don't get that realistic feedback, I know. Some do better than others. Four and a half from Buxom. Localizer alive. See the localizer swinging in? I'm looking down here. This is my localizer. Localizer's alive, swinging in. And I'm going to start that turn now. So I'm trying to work the cursor and the yoke and everything at the same time. I'm going to start just a kind of a, just shy of a standard rate turn, kind of around. That should work out pretty well since I had a fairly aggressive angle. I might miss it by just a hair. We'll see here. Yeah, I'm going to miss it by just a hair. I'm not going to increase my bank angle to catch up with it. I'm going to let it go a degree or two past, and then I can always go a degree or two past to reel it back in. This far out's no big deal. Actually, it's starting to work out better and better now. I'm going to miss it by just the tiniest bit, it looks like. Not over banking here. Actually, not too bad. It's going to float just a degree or two past. See that slightly broken line there? Watching my altitude. Heading bug bugged and watching my altitude so I don't lose any more there. It's tough. I get so picky on a G1000 where it shows me I'm 20 feet off on regular altimeter. That wouldn't look like much anything, would it? All right. Looking good. Okay. Buxom. Buxom at 3,000 feet and then down to trail at 2,300. Whoops. So I get for spending some head downtime. I got 2.4 to Buxom though myself a little bit of power because I have a tendency to drift downward it looks like whenever I take my head down to look at my approach plate. Life's looking good. Nice stable air, well trimmed. No autopilot on, just hand flying it. All looks good though. Zoom in just the tiniest bit so you all can see this a little bit better. There we go. All right. 1.7 from Buxom. I'm drifting to the right. Let me fix that. There we go. Okay, I want to pause here for a second. I just got my advisory glide slope. Do you see that? It's hiding up here. And really my advisory uh, descent path here um, as well. 
Again, it's magenta. That's how I know it's an advisory. And let me show you on the chart here. So again, where am I going to get my real glide slope? Well, I get it at the Maltese Cross at Blazer. However, I'm almost at Buxom. I'm 1.4 out. It's given me an advisory glide slope to get from Buxom down to the 2300. It wants to be at trail and then through trail eventually down to 2,000. So I'm going to lose 2,000 feet from now to get me down to Blazer, but going through trail first. So you can see how that kind of paints that picture there for me. That's the advisory glide slope that I have there. Let me unpause. All right. So we're going to fly right here for a second. I'm still a mile from Buxom. And I'm drifting to the right again, just the tiniest little bit. You've heard me say it a million times, but the closer we get, the more and more sensitive this is going to end up being, right? So just take note of, uh, of that here. All right, five seconds. It wants me direct to a 103. As you can see, I'm already direct to that 103. So life is good there. I am now buxom inbound to trail, as you can see. And again, I have my advisory glide slope my advisory descent path. Let me go back to the right. I haven't flown into it yet. Why? Well, because I'm, I'm four miles. Let me pause again real quick. I'm four miles, 3.7 miles, and I only need to get down to 2,300 feet, right? I'm going to literally fly into that, as you'll see here in just a moment. Off pause now. I still need to drift a little bit to the left. I'm going to purposely hold my 3,000 feet to show you how we can fly into that advisory glide slope, if we should wish. We could also, rightfully so, just descend ourselves down to 2300 right now if we wanted to. There's, there's no, uh, no problems with that. It's simply just advisory to help you out in the process. So, see I'm just slightly left of course, slightly left of my bug. Watch that localizer reel itself back in here. 2.5 out from trail. All is looking good. And if that advisory glide slope doesn't start coming in soon, I'm going to start bringing myself on down. 2.2. Back on my course. Now I'm going to let my, this natural tendency I have to drift to the right anyways, bring me back. There goes the advisory glide slope. See it sneaking its way in. I knew it was going to come in eventually here. And again, remember the line underneath it on my profile view just tells me I just have to stay no less than that. I can stay above it, certainly. I'm going to use the advisory glide slope. I, I like it. I like the idea of using the advisory glide slope to kind of follow it on down. It'll be good practice. 1.3 from trail. Trail to me is nothing more than another fix, though. It's blazer where I'm going to get, and this should switch to an actual glide slope here just before blazer. Actually, probably just outside of trail when I pick that up. Uh, that should come in here holding this here. If I stopped losing altitude, I'd get that glide slope there. All right. Again, it wants me to direct to a 103 and 6, 5. All is looking good. All right. Not changing anything. Now I have my actual glide slope. Check that out. See how the advisory glide slope was kind of showing and, and, and popping up there to, to show it to me? Again, you could argue I'm a little bit high, but you know what? I'm above the numbers. Nothing is wrong with that. And I'm going to fly into the glide slope and use that to kind of help me bring it on down. So here comes my glide slope, glide slope intercept. I just put those flaps in there and we're going to bring it on down following that glide slope. Let me get a little bit of trim to make my life better. There we go. A little bit to the left, a little bit down. Nothing major. Great. Actually, need a little more power now, huh? There we go. And a little bit left. Waiting for blazer. 2700, taking this literally all the way down for th to 300. But life's looking pretty good. Tiny, tiny adjustments here. Good. Holding this, gonna drift back over to the right. Gonna catch up to that glide slope just the tiniest little bit here. So I wanna point out something important. A glide slope is configured for 500 feet per minute as a descent. So look at me right now, I'm holding 350. I will never catch that glide slope holding 350. I need to exceed 
500 or 550 if I want to catch up to that. Anything, if I'm trying to catch up my glide slope, I need to descend more than 500 feet per minute down, otherwise I will just fly this the entire time. I'll never catch up to it. So there's 450, let me push the envelope just a little bit more, and the tiniest bit to the right. See, I lost another dot on the glide slope. Let me take a little bit of power back. Here comes Blazer. Looking good. Let me catch up here, because I should be down at 2,000 at Blazer, as we know. There we go. There's 500 feet per minute. Watch that start to come back in now. And again, it's going to get touchy as we get closer. So small adjustments. Look, holding 500 kind of maintains it. A little more than that will help bring it on in. I'll take the tiniest bit of power back to help that descent, and over to the left just a little bit. Nothing major. It's hard on the sim. Nothing major, but you see how just a few degrees off sends that needle there. 550, 600, watch that glide slope start to come back in now. 1900 for a 300. Starting to get my call out. 600 is bringing the glide slope back in just like we talked about. Now if I could just get the tiniest bit to the left, I can start to arrest some of that descent. Just watch, I'm going to go just the other side of my heading bug. Might even still be touching the heading bug. 1800 for 300. Eyes constantly moving. I'm going to hold this heading right here. Watch how this heading brings the localizer back in relatively quickly. 1700 for 300. Great. Watch that localizer come back in. Back on my glide slope. Life's looking good. That tiny heading adjustment, look at how it's real in the localizer right back in. 1600 for 300. I can now drift to the right just a little bit. All is looking good. Don't want to get too below it now. Over to the right just a little bit. 1400 for 300 on my course. Looking good. 1400 for 300 if I didn't already call it out. Just kind of holding this heading there. I know, I know it's not a perfectly straight line, but it's okay. Giving a little bit of power in there. Not much. 1300 for 300. This heading right here is going to be perfect. It's going to straighten that line right back up. 1200 for 300. Back to the right just ever so slightly. 1100 for 300. Just the tiniest bit to the right. No big deal. Keep that descent coming down. Life's looking good. Everything is set. 1,000 for 300. L tiniest bit to the right. Not looking outside. 1,000 for 300. Looking good. 900 for 300. Back on my course here. It's tempting to want to look outside, but it's just going to screw you up. So you got to be careful. 800 for 300. Right here. This is the heading I'm just going to hold. Right here. Don't bother chasing it. Runway in sight, by the way. You can you see what, what that little degree off looks like? I'm lined up to kind of land in the grass. So you can see as you get closer, it becomes so sensitive with that. It's actually good to see the runway and see how far a half a dot is two miles out good example there for you. Still continue to follow the glide slope on down. 600 for 300. Kind of holding this here. That's going to reel it right back in nicely. Again, runway in sight. Looking great. Let that descent come down a little bit more. Bring some power back. Knowing that I'm landing here, and just keeping her nice and stable. Catching up with my glide slope. All is looking good. Here comes my minimums of 300, and we are landing this thing. Let me angle up so I can seal it better for a landing. So I want to hear from you all. Are you using the simulator in your own flying as well? I'm telling you, instrument flying, my goodness, it is so great to get out there and be practicing your instrument approaches in a simulator. 
utilize the pause button and program everything up. Make the program mistakes here. Make the approach mistakes here. It is way, way cheaper. This is just a basic computer uh, with X-Plane 11 set up on it. Nothing too terribly fancy. Nothing a, a decent computer at your house certainly couldn't handle. Now landings, I don't recommend practicing with the sim. Let's see how this one is. Well, it was all right. Not that great. Yes, I better get my foot on the pedals there. In the rain at Portland. And now the taxiway diagram comes up. Anyways, M0 Nation, I want to hear how you are using simulators in your, really your private or your instrument flying as well. Can't wait to read your comments below this video on YouTube, on Facebook, on m0a.com. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you. My iPad fell, right? So I was saying good pilot's always learning. Take a two-week free trial of our online ground school and see why Aviation Consumer Magazine named it the top online ground school on the market. The first thing you'll notice is that we never teach to the test. We teach real world skills that are gonna keep you and your loved ones safe when you fly. Now it's because of this real world teaching, you'll pass your knowledge test and your check ride with flying colors. With one membership, you get access to all our courses, plus weekly webinars with myself and this outstanding M0A.com team. It's really like an interactive TV show broadcast from our studio, where you get to interact with a team of CFIs. We also offer live support and email support to make sure you succeed. Now, one thing you'll notice is that M0A is like nothing else on the market. It is truly a flight training community geared towards making you a safer, smarter pilot because a good pilot is always learning. It's much more than a slogan for us. It is truly a mission. So click below and take a two week, no strings attached trial of our top rated private, instrument, commercial, and FOI courses. Once you join our flight training community, I promise you will never want to leave.